So today I want to talk about emotional manipulation of children. These are some of the questions that I tend to get asked quite a lot, so I'm going to just work my way through them. So first off, how do you prove that your child is being emotionally manipulated? The first thing I've got to acknowledge the elephant in the room, which is that it's not easy because you're relying on opinion and what you think is truth and what you think is manipulation. So let's talk about knowing what the signs are. How do you know what looks like emotional manipulation? So again, you've experienced this, so rely upon what you've experienced, how you experienced the manipulation of your ex. And these were gaslighting, blame shifting, projection. Notice the signs of that within your children. So this might be any sudden changes in their behaviour. So not wanting to see you, not wanting to do a particular activity that they used to love. And it could also be that they have very aligned views, whereas they used to like doing something, but that your ex didn't like them doing it. Now, all of a sudden, they don't like doing that activity, but they really like doing something that their ex always wanted them to do. And again, that U-turn of opinion, that sudden 180 that they have done, these are all clues that they are experiencing a level of emotional manipulation. So what do you do with it? What do you do with the evidence that you are able to collect? So the first thing is child-focused language. If this is about your child and what they are experiencing, not what your ex is doing. It's just that shift from being about your ex has done this to your child is experiencing this. I use Evidence Tracker, which is part of our Get Caught Ready program, and this helps you to gather and organise your evidence. So start putting it into different categories around different behaviours. You can then point these inconsistencies out to Kafka's and the court using that framework. But ultimately, what you really are going to need is an expert psychologist assessment, which you can get under Practice Directive 25. So what sort of things are going to help you to document emotional manipulation? So videos of the relationship that you had with the children prior to any allegations that were made, cards that they sent you telling you how much they love you, anything that other people have witnessed in your relationship and how positive it has been. Diarise all their behavioural changes. Make sure that you've got it what it was, the day that it happened, was there a preceding event? Because often you find that there's a trigger and then they behave in this way. So you might have really annoyed your ex and the response is your child does something. That shows emotional manipulation. Text messages in their own words. Again, that might be, I love you, can't wait to see you, to I hate you. Diarise all of it. Keep it in some sort of system. And again, any concerns from school or nursery or other independent witnesses that support any changes that they have noticed within the children's behaviour. Why is it important to get independent witnesses? It's mainly you versus your ex, your word against theirs. So when you bring in someone who is educated, who is credible, who is independent and non-biased, then you can show that this is about the children. This isn't about a vendetta. This isn't about you and your ex. It's about the children. You are child focused. And someone that is impartial and is totally child focused is best placed to be able to do that. It also gives the children someone to speak to, someone who understands what they're going through, which can be a real safe place for them to go when they're experiencing such a horrendous form of abuse that is very confusing to them. And it will also validate your thoughts, obviously. You know what's going on, but to have someone outside of you who has witnessed it for themselves say, yeah, yeah, I see that. Wow, that feels not good, but it feels, thank God someone else is seeing this. I'm not going mad. Which, when you've been gaslit for the entirety of your relationship, it can feel really grounding for you to be able to do that. So when should you start documenting your suspicions? Right now, day one. Get as much as you can. Even if you think it might not be important, write it down. You can always delete it later, but get it all down and in an order. Again, we use evidence tracker because this is a format for you to be able to put down the incident, the description, who was present, and what evidence you've got to support that. So that is my advice if you are dealing with emotional manipulation, if your children are experiencing emotional manipulation, 
as I said, it's not an easy thing to live with. It's not an easy thing for you to see your children experiencing, but you can start to prove that your ex is emotionally manipulating the children to behave in a way that suits their narrative, that suits their vendetta against you, and that plays their trauma out by painting you as the bad guy and then as the victim.